Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to do a little Docker in our true NAS. Have you wanted to have Docker capabilities for your true NAS? Well, natively in FreeBSD, which is run underneath the, of the true NAS core, you can't do that. So, how can we do it? Well, we're going to take Beehive virtualization and do and add the capability to our true NAS box right here. Let's get started. Okay. Here is my TrueNAS. As you can see, this is the TrueNAS 12 release, and it is ready to go. I've got a uh, nice little Xeon X5650 on there, uh, and we're gonna go scroll on down here to Virtual Machines. Click on that, and as you can see, I already have a couple of virtual machines in here, but they are off. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Guest operating system, it's going to be Linux, of course, and we're gonna call it Boo-boo, Docker. So, local system, UFI boot, blah, blah, blah. All these things, perfectly fine. So, let's give it one virtual CPU. Because we're just going to do test this. We're going to just give it one virtual CPU, one core, one thread, blah, blah, blah. So, let's, but let's go ahead and give it some RAM. Let's give it 2048. Make the RAM. We're going to create a new disk and then we need to pick a location. So on our locations, we want to go to VMs. This is where I have set up mine. So I have a tank slash VM location and this doesn't have to be very big because we're just not doing a whole lot. So let's just give it a, a, a 30 gig drive. Click next. Now, Here's where we're talking about the networking. Vert IO, perfect for this, or you can do E1000. So, in my particular case, BG1 is the network adapter that I have connected here. Um, you may have one or more, and it may say something slightly different in here. Um, just make sure that go back to your networking settings and you can see which network is actually connected. I'll show you that. If I just right click, open this dashboard, and you Thing. Let me uh, log in here. If you scroll down on the dashboard, you will have your network interfaces in this. And as you can see, my BGE1 is the one that's connected, whereas the zero is not. All right. That's why you click, collect. That's why you use BG1 here. Hit next. Installation. So now you want to know where installation media is. I've already taken this opportunity previous to, to upload the uh, Ubuntu ISO. So I should be able to just navigate to that guy and find it. And I believe it is in VM. Ah, yep. So I've got a couple here. There's the Ubuntu 2004. We're going to select that. Boom. So now it gives you a summary of what you're going to make on your virtual machine. Hit submit, and it's going to create this virtual machine. Bing, bang, boom. All right. So here is our virtual machine we just did. So we can hit the VNC console, and boom. Here we are for the installation. We're going to quickly go through the installation of Ubuntu 2004. Okay, here we go. And now we we have this Ubuntu set up and installed. First thing we want to do is we're going to SSH into it to set up Docker. So first time logging in, you will see the IP address and this is the IP address we have. So this dot 203 number here. So we're going to go ahead and roll on over to my handy dandy terminal and remote into this guy. Right, so now we're in there. So I can close this VNC console and everything is going good with this. So we don't need this anymore, but we probably do want to make this a little bit bigger. So let's just do that. Hmm. 
All right, I think that's probably pretty good. Let's clear it and see what we have. Nice blank street, let's get started. Now, um, I'm going to follow the basic installation of Docker on Ubuntu. On Ubuntu. So first thing we're gonna do is a sudo apt update. And that will just make sure that it's all up to date. Reaches out the path to the, the repositories. And then we're going to add a uh, few things here. So we need to add uh, HTTP transport. So we're going to install this. I'm going to just show you right here and paste this in. And that's installing HTTPS, uh, some certs, curl, and software property common. All right. So the next thing we need to do after that's done is go ahead and uh, set up the GPG key for Docker. And that's it here. You're just going to download that key and then add it. We're going to add the Docker repo. So we're going to add the repo for Docker for Ubuntu, the current version, the 20.04 we're using. And then we need to do another update. And so that'll go and refresh all the packages. And then we can, you now we need to update the app cache policy. All right, that's that. Now what we need to do is just install Docker. If you're wondering where you can see all these commands, there's several places. You can, first of all, you can just Google installing Docker on Ubuntu. There's lots of tutorials out there. Um, you can take a look at my uh, Proxmox uh, installation of Docker tutorial on my website. Um, I will provide links in the show notes here to, uh, to be able to get to some of these commands or to, to, to where I'm getting this is I, I actually am using DigitalOcean tutorial so uh, if you've you want to host something on DigitalOcean it's an excellent place to do it I host stuff on DigitalOcean if you check out my description below there is a DigitalOcean's link that if you use uh, gives me a little bit of credit that uh, doesn't cost you anything so um, just consider that if you're doing it. So, and let me just show you this Docker tutorial on DigitalOcean. So here it is, DigitalOcean 2004 Docker install. This was a, a June 2020 by this Brian guy. Um, I like their tutorials. They do a really good job of, of, of going over everything you need. So that's the tutorial I would recommend. So now that Docker is installed, you want to go ahead and in check its status. Let me clear this out here. Boom. Paste. And as you can see, it is running to do now. Well, Docker's running, so really you don't have to do a whole lot. You could just, you're done. But there are a few things you want to do. Um, you want to be able to possibly run Docker commands without having to sudo it. So to do that, we can do this. And that adds this current user to uh, the Docker, this current user to be able to run Docker without. One more thing we need to do. Now we can confirm that Docker is part of that group. You see, now that we have Docker installed, what do we do? Well. I'm going to install portainer. What I want to do is I want to go back to slash here and I want to make a couple of directories. Mkdir. Okay, oh, can't type today. Portainer. Oh, again, so do it. And now we're going to do a slash data one also. All right, 
Now let's just go ahead and take a look at Portainer. All right, so let me just copy this command. And what I'm copying from now is my tutorial on installing Proxmox, Docker on Proxmox with Portainer. And so the Portainer portion is the same. So all I did was create these directories here, and then I'm going to run Docker Portainer on, on the 9000 port using um, these volumes. So let me just slide that over back over here again. Okay. So here is our stuff we have set up for Portainer. All right, so pretty straightforward. We'll just go over this route. Docker run as a daemon on this port using these volumes. And uh, you should be able to just hit enter. IP will give us the IP address of this host. So if you go through here, this is 11.203. I'm gonna go back to our, there's our portainer. <laughs> so it's gonna want you to put in a password and boom. This is going to be managing a local environment. This is all in here. Contact your portainers. There's, there's lots of options here. So, all right, here we go. And here is our portainer on this guy. You can go through here and, and just explore around if you use portainer. This is not really a portainer um, tutorial, but I just wanted to toss that out and, and install something. Portainer is nice if you want to help you kind of keep track of your, your Docker images and everything. So, at any rate, I am Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com. This has been a free NAS, true NAS. It's, it's, look, I got to get used to calling it true NAS now. True NAS for Docker tutorial where we learn how to take true NAS and install a Ubuntu virtual machine using the beehive hypervisor create docker on it and now you can use docker with you on your free nas true nas free nas true nas machine with a little effort stay tuned for our next videos if you got value out of this go ahead and like and subscribe everything helps i appreciate it thank you